Hello everybody, this is how to solve the Rubik's Cube in 10 seconds. So, I'm assuming that you already know how to solve the Ru Rubik's Cube, and if you don't, I have a link to a tutorial in the description. And um, this is really just to get you from the intermediate level to the advanced level. So, the first thing that I'm going to teach you is you need to know two main sets of algorithms in order to become an advanced cuber, and that is OLL and PLL. OLL stands for the orientation of the last layer, which is to correct all of these pieces to create a face on the top side, like that. And you should be able to solve all of the cases in just one algorithm. So if you see this case, you automatically just put in an algorithm and, um, and that side can be solved. You know, if you see this case, do that algorithm and it's solved. And you should be able to solve every single one of the cases in just one algorithm. That is called learning full OLL. Um, the second step is to learn full PLL, which is another set of algorithms. There are less. There are about 20 algorithms, I think, and OLL has about 57. And um, you should be able to solve every single one of the PLL cases in just one algorithm. So here, I see this case, and this, the algorithm that I'm about to do swaps these two corners and this edge with this edge, and that's like that. And um, and there are a lot of different types of algorithms. There's some that just swap uh, adjacent corners, some that only swap edges, and some that do diagonal swaps. And um, and and if you're an intermediate uh, uh, cuber, I um, then, then you should know two look PLL, which is where you, um, let, let me just get a case, which is where you see one case and then first you orient all of the corners and then you do one more algorithm to orient all the edges. And this is called two look PLL because you look two times, I guess, um, and you use two algorithms. So... The first step is to just learn full OLL and full PLL, otherwise known as one look OLL and one look PLL. The second step is to learn advanced F2L, which is to be able to solve every single one of these, not in the intuitive way where, 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 where you would just like hide the corner and then solve it. No, you want to have a a, a built-in algorithm in your muscle memory to solve every single one of the cases. So like in this case, you wouldn't want to take the corner out, hide the corner, remove the edge, and then pair it up and insert it. No, you would want to do it as efficiently as possible, just like that. And you should be able to do most of these cases in about one second. Um, and there are a lot of different cases for this. Uh, some are tougher than others. And you should also know some specific types of inserts. So this is just the basic insert. This is a sledge. And that can reorient the edges on the top. So say you have this where there's an L, you can do a sledge instead of doing the normal insert where you get a bar, you can do a sledge to get a cross on top, which is an easier OL, obviously. And um, another one is an insert from the back. You can use wide moves. And then same with a broken pair. You can use wide moves for a broken pair. You should also learn how to do a sledge from the back, like that. That's another way to do a sledge from the back. Um, and you should also find the most efficient way to improve your look ahead. And that is to solve both back slots first before solving the front slots. Because if you solve the front slots first, then these two slots are occupied and there are most likely F2L corners and edges in these, in these slots. And you aren't able to look ahead that well to them. So instead of solving this right here, you could solve this pair here using wide moves into the back. And that is much more efficient. And then you solve that one. And then here, 
the last two um, pairs are on the front, which are, um, which which results in very good look ahead, and you can go straight into OLL and PLL. Um, so those are the main things that you need to learn. Um, the next things that you need to learn is, or it's not necessary, but this this goes into more advanced territory, where um, you can you can dr drastically improve your F2L by using something called multi-slotting. Uh, let me just set up a case here. Multi-slotting is where you solve two pairs at the same time if one edge is inserted without its corresponding corner and one corner is inserted without its corresponding edge. And you can simply do this just by um, just by doing a D, D move to misalign it so that this can basically become one pair. And this one pair, you can solve the missing edge and corner. And then realign the crop and then realign the bottom layer. And then that's how you can use multi-slotting in your solves. Um, and you don't always need to do D moves to avoid rotations. You can also do wide U moves, which you can see a lot of uh, high level solvers using. Um, for example, from this angle here, instead of rotating instead of rotating and then having it on the left, you can simply do that and then it's on the left and then just do a sledge in. And um, that's, those are the main ways to make your solves more move efficient and to have better look ahead. Um, and after you've learned all of these, you want to improve your turn speed, but not to, but not, not at the rate where your look ahead worsens. It's, it's where you want to improve your turn speed just at the point where your look ahead is, is, is pretty good. Um, but your turn speed isn't like four turns per second. Um, so here, like if, if you like do that and your look ahead is good because you, while you solve this, you're looking ahead to the next pair, but that that's good. But if you do that really quickly, you pause, notice this and then insert it, that's not as good because you're pausing. That takes away lots of time. And when you add all those pauses up, that can become multiple seconds, like three seconds. And if you're averaging 10 seconds, that's already 30% of your solves. It's just pauses. Um, and move speed is extremely important when it comes to last layer. So instead of like seeing this, if, if, if you do two look OL, you would first make the cross and then solve the edges but if you are uh, learning full step a uh, full full OLL you can just do one algorithm and then you need to immediately recognize this and then execute it with high turn turn speed um and another another big factor is to have a good cube uh if you have like something as bad as a rubik's brand which isn't really realistic if you're averaging uh, 20 seconds, it won't be that good because the corner cutting isn't good. You want to have a good cube such as the Moyu WRM Maglev, which has very good reverse corner cutting and can go line to line regular corner cutting. Uh, there's also the r 2020, which has extremely good corner, corner cutting and is only $9 uh, from speedcubeshop.com. And there are some other choices. Uh, if you have smaller hands, there is the Mini YJ, um, which is extremely fast, has strong magnets, and the uh, corner cutting for the YJ Mini is very, very good. It can go about the same as the WRM and the uh, and the RS3M, and the it's very snappy. But the main thing that's going for is its size. If you're if you have very small hands, like my hands, are a little bit too big for this. It's about, or I think it is fifty millimeters. Whereas, I think this is fifty six and this is fifty five point five, or something along those lines. Um, and these are really just the main things that you want to, to, to make your solves more consistently faster. Um, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like the video. And uh, if you haven't already, please consider s subscribing to my channel for more content.